All right, guys, Good old boy 32 here checking out. So we're sitting out here in the Freedom Shack, and uh, we're getting ready to start a new project. So what I wanted to do was uh, got a box here with a bunch of stuff in it, but the most importantly what I wanted to do was go over some of the things that I do when I have a build that I'm getting ready to uh, put together. Uh, and a lot of people have asked me how many AR-15s that I actually do have. Well, that number is kind of a, a top secret little thing, but I'm considering doing something where I'll put a link on my website, kb32tech.com, and uh, have a little video going through the uh, the collection. And I like to call it a collection because, guys, here's the deal. I like to put these things together, and I, I, what I do is I come up with the criteria. What am I going to do with this rifle? What is its function? So from that particular item, kind of like what's this nuts and fancy did, uh, what, what is it intended use or whatever it was. Well, anyway, uh, that's what we do. We sit there and we try to develop it. Uh, so say, for instance, this guy right behind me, this is the Elite build. That is a DMR rifle. And one of the things when I say is, okay, that's a DMR rifle. So we did a series where we did the Elite versus the budget, and we're actually going to do a barrel change out on that budget rifle here in the near future because... Uh, got a rifle barrel in from Ballistic Advantage, and it's their fluted 20-inch uh, premium deal. Um, the the uh, Bear Creek Arsenal, uh, the guy, he couldn't get more than two or three inches out of that thing, no matter what I use. So, well, we're going to change that out. But in any case, one of the things we do develop. What are we gonna What are we gonna do with that rifle? Three gun? Is it a battle rifle? Is it gonna be a fun rifle? Is it gonna be a DMR rifle? Is it going to be for CQB purposes or anyway? So we take all those criteria, and then what I do is I develop an idea in my mind or a picture in my mind what that rifle will will do. And and I mean I and unfortunately for me because I have an addiction to these things, the ultimate uh, battle rifle could be four or five different rifles. And in these builds, what I try to do is I also, I try to steer away from my everyday thing, like uh, the, the Radiant Raptor is my favorite charging handle. Uh, BCM used to be before they broke away from the Veltor guys. Uh, I do like the Aero Precision or the uh, uh, Palmetto State Armory. Uh, charging handle. What type of optic am I going to put on this thing? What is the optimum length? What are we? Where are we going with this? Are we going to be reaching out to three or four hundred yards? Is it going to be a two hundred or in rifle? That kind of thing. Man, there's so many different little things that go through my mind. So in this box um, is a rifle, and it's kind of interesting because I wanted to. I've done a really high end everyday rifle. I've done a really low-end everyday rifle. And a lot of people have asked me, well, you know, I could build a cheaper rifle than that. And in this rifle, what I wanted to do is I wanted to stick to a certain budget so all the parts and pieces, uh, the everyday guy who is not an operator or not a person who is doing top-end competition, but something that everyday an everyday person can relate to, and when you go to your retailer of choice or your online purchaser, uh, buyer, or what, what do you call that? Online store of choice, these products are going to be available. Now, in this box, I bought all these parts and pieces, and I'm a big fan, I'll tell you this right now, uh, Big Daddy Unlimited. I built a lot of rifles from scratch. And because of that, uh, they are probably one of my favorite sources. Now, if I was going to buy a rifle upper, Palmetto State Army is going to be my favorite go-to vendor. Uh, rifle, uh, then they've got the FM barrels with the Geisley handguards on them. You're not going to get much better than that. Uh, they've got the best parts kit in my opinion. Uh, in my opinion, a Andrew, I hope you're enjoying that rifle uh, scope combination from the uh, 100,000 subscriber giveaway. All right, so I know you're tired of hearing about this, but what I wanted to do real quickly is kind of go through the items in this box. And what we're going to do is I'm going to do a video review on each one of the parts and pieces, kind of going through the reasons why I picked those. So let's do this real quickly. Um, you know, I'm a big fan of a, a bunch of different hand guards, but, uh, and I used to do a lot with the UTG Pro, but I've never done one of this as their super slim free float rail system. And this guy right here is the 15-incher, 
And the reason it's a 15 incher, and I'll tell you in a little bit, we'll go through that. But anyway, that's the handguard we're going to be putting on it. Uh, we'll do a review on that individually. Um, looking at some different options for uh, charging handles, and I saw this guy right here. I thought this would be a, a, a neat little deal, I hope. Uh, this is the uh, ambidextrous charging handle. Uh, what does it say? Uh, no latch design. Yeah, we'll figure that one out. But anyway, I uh, never seen one of these, so I went ahead and picked one of these things out so we could do a review, show you guys some pros and cons. As we saw with the Timber Creek uh, charging handle, that thing went back and forth right in my face. I'm going to test it out with a different BCG. I'm also going to test it out with a different upper receiver to see if that was specific to that rifle because you guys need to know that. And it's the only fair way to treat the guys from Timber Creek. Anyway, pretty cool deal. Uh, my dog's barking. So uh, another, uh, what we got here, we have the uh, buffer tube, buffer and spring from Luth AR, great company. Uh, let's see here, Anderson. We've got the Anderson uh, BYO, build your own. This is the platform. Now this one here has got what it looks like a nickel boron uh, hammer and trigger. So it ought to be pretty interesting to see how this thing works out. Uh, I'm really forward. I'm a big fan of Anderson. Everybody, a lot of people don't like them, but uh, be honest with you, I have never had a problem, which is one of the reasons why we're going to go with the, uh, the screaming pony <laughs> on this one. You can anywhere you can get these things twenty nine dollars to forty nine dollars or whatever. Uh, I always try to support my local gun stores, even though I can order them and then pay a transfer fee. It's almost just as cheap just to go and buy these directly from those guys. So I can always pick up a lot, a lot of Anderson lowers whenever I go anywhere. Uh, again, we're gonna do a Luth AR upper receiver. Uh, that is the upper receiver parts kit, and then again we've got the uh, Anderson upper which ought to be interesting to see how close those are. And the anodizing doesn't look anywhere near close. Um, oh, by the way, here's uh, the buffers that I was talking about in the uh, Timber Creek uh, range testing. These are all three of the uh, buffer systems, H1, H2, uh, all that cool stuff. We'll set that back there. Um, I've got a BCM. Now, this is a Magpul uh, grip that I like. Uh, my go-to economical... Uh, bolt carrier group is again the, the uh, Palmetto State Armory. This is their premium with the logo on it. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, one of the best flash hiders you have on the market is this guy right here. This is the uh, Yankee Hill flash hider. I love this thing. And they're cheap. They're like $18, $19. And then uh, as far as barrels are going concerned, we're going to go with the Government Profile Mid-Length Barrel. This is the uh, Ballistic Advantage Modern System. And again, I bought this guy. Um, and we've got a Luth AR. I hope that's mid-length. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, buffer. And then, no, what do you call that thing? Gas tube. And then we've got... Well, a Spikes Tactical, because it was the cheapest one that I wanted at the time. Uh, just a standard, low-profile gas block. All right, so that's it. Uh, one Coming up in the near future, as we go, it's going to be a slow process, because I do have about two or three other builds that are going on right now. Um, but we'll go through all these, and we'll go through the reasons why. You know why I picked the PSA, because it's there. Uh, the great company, uh, the Sport Second Amendment, Anderson. We're going to be using a lot of their stuff. And then uh, the interesting part is I'm looking forward to testing out this guy, the Black Hawk charging handle. It ought to be interesting. And then uh, seeing how the uh, the super slim free float rail system from UTG Pro. We've seen those guys this weekend. And then Luth AR. So anyway, that's what's in the box. That's what's coming up. Um, and I think this is just a good everyday rifle. Oh, uh, by the way, I've got uh, Magpul. Uh, butt stock over there that, from a previous build. And we'll also show you the dollar amounts in this thing. I think this I've got it under uh, 350 bucks in this guy. Something like that. Anyway, uh, that's it. Think of a name of it. Let me know what your comments in the comment section down below. What do you think we ought to name this guy? She's uh, the Everyday Joe. It's pretty cool. Uh, but that's it. Guys, 
If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Support the red, white, and blue, especially those guys who support our uh, Second Amendment and our Constitution 24-7 for our freedom because freedom is not free. And God bless those guys up there in Richmond who are there for Lobby Day in a peaceful exhibition that our Second Amendment does matter. And we are, will not allow a bunch of counties to take over. Let's go to Boy 32. I am out.